Welcome back to another episode on the Truck Master Channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we will be installing the AirDog 2 4G 165 GPH lift pump on a diesel. Really excited about it. Now this particular application will go from an 01 to a 2010 Chevrolet Silverado GMC 66 liter, but we'll be installing this one on the first generation 66 liter Duramax LB7. So very pumped about it. I will be getting to the meat and potatoes of this YouTube video. This will be a no nonsense install. So make sure you watch the video from start to finish so you don't miss a step. It can be very crucial considering we are messing with fuel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Here's the contents that you will receive once you unbox everything. This will be your wiring harness. Of course, you're gonna have your fuel hoses. You guys can see everything that you're gonna need for the install will be in here other than a fuel line disconnect tool. This right here, of course, is your lift pump. Make sure you watch the last video that I posted prior to this one right here. I explained the benefits of an air dog, why I chose it and what it actually does. So these two right here will be the brackets right here, the sandwich in between the frame rail to install the air dog as well. This part right here will be connected to your filler neck tube. And of course you have all your push lock fittings and such and all the hardware to do the install. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove these filters. This is your water separator filter right here. And this right here is your fuel filter. That way we have more access. As you guys can see, I have all these nuts and bolts laid out in their perspective order. So we'll be using these four smaller bolts right here with the four washers as well as the nuts to install the pump on the bracket. Right, so we'll be installing the suction side or fuel in first. What I'll be doing is I'll be using some anti-seize. You can also use regular motor oil. So as long as you get them properly tightened, they will definitely not leak. So this would be your suction side right here. Go ahead and install this fitting right here. I will be using a 19 millimeter. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the return fitting right here, and this will be a 16 millimeter. And again, make sure you put some engine oil or anti-seize to prevent galling. Go ahead and just flip it over on this side, and it's gonna install right here in this port right here. Go ahead and tighten that up. Basically, all you're gonna do is just drop these bolts right through here, just get you set. And this would be the proper way to mount it right there. Put it right through the holes. So once you've done that, go ahead and use an Allen wrench. Just go ahead and tighten all these nuts right here to the bolts. And of course, I just want to go over this one more time just to ensure that they are all tight. And this is exactly how it should look, just like that. Next, we're going to go ahead and flip it over and then take your mounting block right here. We're going to go ahead and line up our plate as such. We'll be using the four bolts that look just like that right there. They're countersunk right into the plate. Just drop those right in. And once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and flip this thing over. And we're going to install the lock washers and the nuts that go on there. The nuts will be a 13 millimeter. So go ahead and just hold on to the end with an Allen wrench right here. And then go ahead and just start snugging these ones up right here. I'm not going to go overly tight until I get everything set. But right now, I just want to get them locked in for right now. Once you've gotten this down to the desired location, go ahead and just tighten everything up. Just make sure everything is good to go. So as you guys can see, we have the brackets installed. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the frame rail. That's exactly where we're going to install it. As you guys can see, it's going to sandwich just like that. Uh, one thing to note that I missed here, orientation, note orientation, you're gonna have the two smaller holes on the bottom right there. So make sure that you guys don't install this upside down before you guys put it on the frame rail. So let's go ahead and get it there. Okay, so now that we're under the truck, this is the inside of the frame rail. We are on the driver's side. Basically, as you guys can see, I routed the mounting bolts in there now. Try to put my hand behind there. So 
So at this point right now, we're just tightening the bolts to the frame. Uh, I'll be using a 9 16th for this one. I wanted to get this fitting right here as far away as this fuel line as I possibly could because once I start routing it, I don't want to get too close. So this is my preference. This is how I do it. The location right here, this isn't the end all right here, but this is where I have it located. I'm happy with where it's at. It's going to be out of the way. You won't be able to see the filters. Good to go. So next we're going to go ahead and disconnect the fuel lines. This is not a fun job whatsoever. You're going to have one right behind the fuel cooler, which is right here, and then one on the top of the tank, which I'll show you guys here in a second. But what you'll be needing for the job is a fuel line disconnect tool. Now, you'll be using the half inch right here. It's labeled half inch. I purchased this from Harbor Freight. It was about five bucks, but you can also go to your local hardware store or auto parts store, and I'm pretty sure they'll have one. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and come up here to the top of the tank up here. This is the line that you're going to want to go ahead and disconnect right there. Go ahead and slide that in. Just pull back like that. If you are having an issue, guys, let me clip that back in for you. So it's clipped in. Really work it, like really get it in there. I know mine's coming out pretty easily, but that's not the case for most people. Hey, the only thing I can tell you is penetrating lube, maybe some compressed air inside there, um, and just really working with it. Best thing you can do is really push in to your actual fitting, and while you're pushing in, kind of work its way backwards. So. Just work with it guys. I know it's a pain in the butt. So now that we have that disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it from the other side. Here is your fuel cooler. Go ahead and look right in between there. You're gonna see this line right there where my finger is. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect that. If you have an issue removing that, go ahead and just remove the fuel cooler with these bolts right here. Those are the two lines that you need to disconnect right there. And then you can remove this hose right here, or you can leave it there in case you want to return it back to stock easier. Your call, really. So, all right, let's go ahead and route these lines. Yeah, I have it connected to the hose. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in to the top of the tank right now. Once you hear that click, you know it's in. All right, we're good down there. I have it routed over the fuel tank, and again, I'm gonna clean this up, but it's going to connect right here, guys, to the fuel in port right there next to the adjustment set screw right here. This is routed up to the fuel module. And what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and measured to the point where I need to clip it in. Go ahead and push in until you hear it click, just like that. And that's it. You're set in. We'll go ahead and connect this right here, which is going to connect right here in between the fuel cooler where we disconnected that hose. I have my fitting, just putting some oil on it. We're gonna go ahead and connect this right in there. Really gotta work with these though. Twist and push, I guess, is the easiest way to do it. Just like that. So I measured where I wanna cut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the other side. Go ahead and cut the filler neck tube in half with a pocket knife or a blade. All right, so onto the filler tube right here. Now these arrows right here are gonna point towards the tank. There's like a little directional sort of vent flap in there. They're gonna point towards where the direction of the tank is at, which is right there. Because it's returning the fuel back to the tank, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and put our clamps in our filler tube inside of this neck right here and tighten everything up. And there you have it guys, that's how you install it. Next we're gonna go ahead and route the return line back to the lift pump. Clip the L fitting to the return side right here. It kinda L's off right here. And then push them through the frame and then we're gonna go ahead and route it through the frame to the tank fill neck. All right, so let's recap really quick here. Like I said, this right here is going to your filler neck. 
which is right there. This fuel line is routed right behind the fuel cooler, which is that line that we disconnected right here. And then this line right here is routed to your fuel module on top of the tank, which is that line right there, guys. But so far, so good. I was able to route everything zip tight out of the way. Make sure you get it out of the way of this drive shaft right here. That would not be a good situation for you. But yeah, everything's tucked nice and neatly and routed as it should. Looking really good. We're going to go ahead and move on to the wiring. All right, guys, this is my relay. I'm going to go ahead and mount it right there on the side. So next we're going to go ahead and route these two connections straight to the lift pump. It's just plug and play. It's very simple. I'm going to go ahead and route this wire right through the frame rail. Alright, so go ahead and remove the fuse panel right here. It says TBC Ignition 1. That's what I'll be using. Uh, looks like there's a 30 amp fuse here. So it's looking like not this one, not this one, but this one is what I'm going to be going with. So once you remove that fuse, go ahead and install it in the add a fuse port right here and just go ahead and plug it right back in. Very, very simple. So this is a 17 millimeter right here. I always find that this is a really good spot to tap into power. So go ahead and remove that and then we'll connect our power wire right here. And then for the ground, I'm going to go ahead and use this little bolt right here. So I'll go ahead and remove that and then ground it off right there. Now, last but not least, this will actually connect to a ignition coil light from my understanding. If you don't have it, just tape it off and get it out of the way. So you don't need this right here. Getting back underneath the truck, you don't need this connection as well. So... Next, guys, we're going to go ahead and install the fuel filters, and we will turn the key over, prime, prime it, and show you how it starts. What I'm going to do with the rest of this right here is I'm going to go ahead and coil it all up, zip tight together, and to get it out of the way, tuck it up nice and neatly and secure. The filters, we'll go ahead and put our water separator on, and they recommend that you put diesel fuel in there. Hand tight, as such. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put that fuel filter on, and I'm going to go ahead and just tighten it all the way up. And I'm going to go ahead and just crack it like that. I'm going to turn the key, let everything prime. And what it's going to do is it's going to change the tone. I mess this up every time. If fuel goes everywhere, it's okay, guys. Just get a drip pan, get ready to go, because you're probably going to take a little bit of a bath, especially if this is your first time doing it. But I've done this numerous times, and I've taken a bath quite a bit, too. So let's go ahead and get this key turned, and let's go ahead and fill this thing up. Yep, exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. I wasn't expecting it to prime that quickly. That was crazy. Alright, well, it's done. Wow, that, that moved quickly. My fast on my Duramax, my other truck, <laughs> does not prime that fast. Wow. Alright, so essentially what was going on is once that fuel came out, Basically what, you, what I just did there is I purged the air out of the fuel system because you don't want any air in the system. Now that we're done with this, we're going to go ahead and uh, cross our fingers and hope everything starts. up so easily unbelievable so right now I'm just getting under here checking for leaks looks good <sighs> all right wow I'm impressed how easily that started and that pump is so quiet. Oh, I was expecting the pump to be quiet, but wow. 
All right, here we go. Guys, so that's how you install it. I ended up with this much hose left, and here's the uh, spare parts so that we don't need anymore. So that's pretty much it. It's a pretty straight up, straightforward install. I didn't document it, but I had a heck of a time removing that fuel line. I was wiggling, playing with it. it took me a while, but I was able to break it free. Just really tough to get back there. I think that was the hardest part was disconnecting that fuel line right on top of the fuel tank. That was, that was a tough one right there. So hopefully this video was thorough. Hopefully I answered your questions on installing a AirDog 2 4G. This is a 165. Again, this is going to correlate for an 01 to a 2010 6.6 .6 liter Duramax. I will be leaving a link in the description below if you guys are interested in buying or purchasing this lift pump right here or any other stuff that they have on the AirDog website. Make sure you guys check them out. Big shout out to them. And again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you guys subscribe so you guys can continue to follow the Wife Max build. I don't know if you noticed what I did there in this YouTube video, but I did this on a gravel driveway. I could have easily done this in my nice garage, you know, with the creeper getting under there and all that. But um, I want to do this because I'm just an average Joe, just like most of you guys are with just simple hand tools. And I, I just want to show you guys that you guys can do it. So again, I do appreciate your time as always. We'll see you on the next video. Stay tuned.